Okay, today we'll see about cardiac glycosides. So, cardiacs, it is mainly acting on cardiac muscle, that is the heart muscle. And what about glycosides? It is having two parts. One is sugar portion and non-sugar portion, okay? So, sugar portion can be called as glycone and non-sugar portion can be called as a glycone. And the two are connected by means of glycosidic linkage or ether linkage. So, what about glycosides? Glycoside means that is having two parts. One is a sugar portion, another is a non-sugar portion. And that two are connected by glycosidic linkage or ether linkage. Okay. In this cardiac glycosides, they are acting as cardiotonic. So, we can divide that into two. That is cardiotonic. Tonic means that is giving strength. So, that is giving strength to the heart. That is, they strengthen the heart muscle by increasing the force of contraction. That is called as cardiotonic. And they are acting as and they are used in the treatment of congestive heart failure and the examples for that is glycosides of digitalis squill or strophanthus in these three the glycoside uh, uh, digitalis glycosides know that would be predominant now we'll see the hydrolysis reaction of cardiac glycosides by means of acid or alkali or enzymatic hydrolysis we are getting two products already we have seen what are all present in glycosides glycone and a glycone this a glycone no that is steroid in nature and is responsible for cardiac activity and this a glycone is responsible for its solubility and distribution characteristics so the main biological activity of a cardiac glycoside is residing on a glycone now now here the sugar present in egg, uh, sugar present in the cardiac glycoside no that is existing in beta configuration now we'll see the types of cardiac glycosides they are otherwise called as steroidal glycosides and it is of two types one is a cardinolide another one is called bufadienolide cardinolide otherwise called c23 steroids and bufadienolides otherwise called c24 steroids we can divide that into two that is card enolites okay card means cardiac acting on heart and enolite that's otherwise called butinolite okay so we can again divide this into butin plus olide olide means that indicating a lactone ring olide means a lactone ring butin butane with one double bond that is called as butin so butan so that should have four carbons with one double bond that is butan so what is meant by butinolide that is the four mem that should have four carbons with one double bond and it should, uh, it should have a lactone okay so lactones with four carbons in the heterocyclic ring structure that is called as butinolide otherwise or it can be called oxidized derivatives of furan the simplest one is called two furanone we have known furan is a five membered ring with the two bonds that is called furan and second portion we have ketone means that is called as two furanone so what is the cardinolide it is a, an, it is having unsaturated five membered lactone at c17 that can be called as cardinolide so the butinolides no that can be otherwise called as butyro lactones so we have unsaturated butyro lactone at c17 means that can be called as cardinolide the examples are digitalis glycosides that is digitoxin digoxin and for strophanthin it is strophanthus it is strophanthin quabane and tevitia it is tevitin this is about cardinolides now we'll see bufadienolides we can divide that into three that is bufadienolide already we have known olide that indicates lactone ring diene means that should have two double bonds that is bufa means from the toad genus bufo so this would be the structure of bufadienolide so that is a six membered ring inside the ring you should have oxygen two bonds with the ketone already we have known six membered ring that is six membered heterocyclic ring having oxygen as the heteroatom with two bonds that can be called as pyrin and that is having ketone means that is called as pyrone there may be two types of pyrones that is two pyrone and four pyrone if the ketone is connected with the second carbon means i mean second portion means that is called as two pyrone if it is at fourth one means that can be called as four pyrone so two pyrones otherwise called as alpha pyrone and four pyrones otherwise called as gamma pyrone so here already we said for cardinolite that is it is a, it is having unsaturated butyro lactone here it is having alpha pyrone alpha pyrone or alpha pyronone in 17th portion that is called as bufadienolide examples are european squill and indian squill they are examples are scilarin sorry um, scilarin a and b okay now we'll see about steroids so uh, most of them have known about steroids that is it is having a basic nucleus called cyclopentano perhydrophenanthrene we have known the structure for phenanthrene so fusion of three benzene rings this can be called as phenanthrene but this no this can be called perhydrophenanthrene the meaning for perhydro is 
fully saturated or completely saturated so the phenanthrene it is not having any bond that's why it is called perhydrophenanthrene so what is the meaning of perhydro fully or completely saturated so that is called perhydrophenanthrene so the perhydrophenanthrene is fused with the cyclopentane that's why it is called cyclopentano perhydrophenanthrene so that would be the basic nucleus for a steroid so what is that cyclopentano perhydrophenanthrene and it is having two angular methyl groups those these two lines know they are indicating the presence of methyl so what are the two angular methyl groups they are at six, uh, C18 and C19 that C18 is connected to C13 and C19 is connected to C3 so it is having two angular methyl groups one is 18 and 19 okay they are attached at 13 and 10 two angular methyl groups are present in a steroid and at C3 it is having oxygen containing functional groups okay so oxygen containing functional group is present at C3 and at position 17 it may or may not have uh, de sorry may not have side chain okay and uh, last point is on dehydrogenation by means of selenium we are getting diyl hydrocarbon so what about steroid the basic nucleus is cyclopentano perhydrophenanthrene and it is having two angular methyl groups 18 and 19 18 is connected to c13 and 19 is connected to c10 and at c3 it is having oxygen containing functional group and at c17 it may or may not have a side chain okay on dehydrogenation by using selenium we are getting diyl hydrocarbon now look at this structure so already we have known this is a steroid and in the steroid we should have oxygen containing functional group so here we have already we said in the case of glycoside glycone and a glycone are connected by means of glycosidic linkage or ether linkage so instead of hydrogen here sugar is attached for a cardiac glycoside so sugar this i mean instead of hydrogen sugar is attached and this part is called a glycone non sugar portion and that two are connected by means of o this is called glycosidic linkage or ether linkage and at the, um, this is about third portion at 17 we said it may or may not have a side chain for a steroid but in the case of cardiac glycoside at 17 portion it is having lactone that may be a that may be a butyrolactone or a gamma pyrrone if it is having butyrolactone that can be called as cardinolide and it is a alpha pyrrone means that is called bufadienolide okay so in the case of digitalis glycosides already we said it is having two angular methyl groups that is 18 and 19 18 is connected to 13 and 19 is connected to c10 okay so in the case of digitalis glycosides it is having angular methyl group i mean uh, it is having two angular methyl groups that is uh, in uh, 10 and 13 but in the case of strophanthus glycoside c10 it is not having angular methyl group so c10 is connected with aldehyde or a primary alcohol for strophanthus glycoside okay so we told about sugar already the sugar is attached with the third portion of that a glycone okay so uh, the examples for sugars may be d glucose d digitoxose d cimarose d sarmentose d digitalose L ramnose, L tevitose, L oleandrose. Here we are indicating D capital D and capital L. This capital D capital L no that is representing configuration that is relative configuration. We should not confuse that one with the small d and small l. This small d small l no that is indicating sign of rotation that is dextro or levo. Okay. And now we will see the first drug that is called as the digoxin under cardiac glycoside. This would be the structure of digoxin. So same uh, steroidal nucleus that is having two angular methyl groups and at 12th and 14th it is having hydroxy groups. So C12, C14 hydroxy groups, Hydro, two hydroxy groups at C12 and C14 and 17 it is having so it is a cardinolite it is a five membered lactone at 17 that's why it is a cardinolite and at third portion it should have oxygen containing functional group and that is connected with the sugar so here the sugar portion is tri digitoxose that is three molecules of digitoxose so what is the sugar present here that is three molecules of digitoxose what is the name of the a glycone that is called as digoxygenin genin means without sugar so digoxin without sugar that's why it is called as digoxygenin so how many hydroxy groups are present here two at c C12 and C14. So it is a cardinolite. We said three molecules of digitoxose. This would be the structure for digitoxose. Its molecular formula would be CH6H12O4. So what is the form? What would be the structure? CHO, CH2, CHO, 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 CH3. Otherwise, it can be written like this. So six member heterocyclic ring inside the ring oxygen as the heteroatom first th one, three, four. These three portions are connected with OH, and the fifth one by means of CH3 okay so this is called as 
this is called as digitoxose so three molecules of digitoxose here it is having okay so one three four that are connected with oh so one three four that are connected with oh here in the first portion of the digitoxose no uh, digitoxose is connected with this a glycone okay so first and the fourth one of digitoxose is connected with another one another digitoxose by means of first one so one four here one and again four so that's why this is beta 1,4 glycosidic linkage the sugar portion conjugates with the I mean connects with the third carbon of hydroxy group of A glycone by means of beta 1,4 1,4 that is 1,4 1,4 so 1,4 glycosidic linkage what is the main use used in the treatment of congestive heart failure with atrial fibrillation now we will see the next drug that is called as this is digoxin this is called as digitoxin so in the case of digoxin we have two hydroxy groups one at 12 another at 14 in the case of digitoxin only one hydroxy group at 14th position only one hydroxy group at 14th position so same sugar that is th three molecules of digitoxose try digitoxose what is the a glycone present here this is dig uh, digitoxin that's why digitoxygenin for this one for digoxin this is digoxin that's why digoxygenin this one is digitoxin that's why digitoxygenin digitoxin without sugar so digitoxy uh, digitoxygenin so what is the difference between digoxin and digitoxin for digoxin it is having two hydroxy groups 12 and 14 here it is having only one hydroxy group at 14 that is digitoxin now we'll see deslanoside so what is the deslanoside say everything same as digoxin so up to this would be same and here here no instead of one hydrogen glucose would be attached that's why it is called as glucodigoxin so what is the difference between digoxin with the deslanoside here one addition of one more glucose that's why it is called glucodigoxin and here it is having another name desacetyl lanatoside c i mean in the structure of lanatoside c same as it of lanatose same as the top deslanoside but here instead of one hydrogen acetyl group is added in lanatoside c but here this acetyl group is absent that's why it is called deacetyl or desacetyl lanatoside c that's why it is getting the name deslanoside so it is indicating desacetyl lanatoside that's why it is called deslanoside so what is the glycone present three molecules of digitoxose with one glucose and a glycone is digoxygenin so digoxygenin having two hydroxy groups at 12 and 14 that is called as digoxygenin now we will see the SAR so um, already we have known a glycone is responsible for cardiac cardiac activity so the biological activity is mainly residing on a glycone and for glycone that is responsible only for solubility and distribution characteristics so here the steroidal nucleus no that is the a glycone portion that is important for activity here it is having four rings that is uh, a glycone is having four rings that is a b c d the first rings no a and b that rings should be cis fused if it is transfused the activity would be reduced and all the glyc all the cardiac glycoside should have beta hydroxy group I mean 14th beta hydroxy group that is important for activity so if it is not having 14 hy beta hydroxy group means it is not having any activity the steroidal nucleus without lactone or lactone without steroidal nucleus it is not having activity so for activity the steroidal nucleus and also the lactone both are important so steroidal nucleus without lactone or lactone without steroidal nucleus it is not having any activity so the unsaturated lactone at C17 no, that is important for binding with the receptor so this is important for binding with the receptor if that would be saturated means it is not having any activity so after this we have completed cardiac glycosides.